shout out to these guys because they're awesome. Hey guys, Super Folder Ghostbuster here, and I'm just saying that I haven't really talked about the PvB lore all that much. Well, I have been a bit cowardly because I fear of backlash, because PvB lore might cause in that for my channel, but El Scurrito. I'm going to show it just for the case of this video so that you can get a good glimpse of what the PvB have justified about the MLP show. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Number five on our list is... If the MLP world is so peaceful, why are there villains attacking it almost all the time? This is something that has confused people for some time, I believe. So the PBB have decided to come up with our own solution to this problem. What if I told you that there was another villain behind the scenes? Now this may seem like a huge stretch, but hear me out. What if I told you that this villain was not only controlling every single MLP villain ever, but also controlled the MLP princess herself. That's why she doesn't go fight these villains herself instead of sending the MLP main characters. It makes perfect sense. But who might it be, you might ask? Hmm... just find out later on in the series. Number four on our list goes to Twilight Sparkle's older brother Shining Armor. Now to be honest I really don't like this character but I'm gonna tell you why I really don't like this character and the reason why I don't like this character is how we fixed him and you might be wondering to yourself how do we fix this guy? Well... <laughs> Yeah, he turns to the dark side. Next! Number three on our list goes to... Queen Chrysalis, who is one of the villains from MLP. Sure, I hate her because she's an MLP character instead of being a villain, but to be honest, I'm actually kind of okay with this character. But the reason being is how we fixed her, and how we fixed her is... We broke her out of prison and asked her to join us in the fight against the MLPs, and she accepted. So now we have the shape-shifting MLPs on our side. Number two on our list shall go to... The Dazzlings from the second Equestria Girls movie. And I can't believe I had to say that. Now if you want to know how the PBB fixed these three girls up... Uh, well, um... How can I put this? Uh... This one here turns into a pirate. This one also turns into a pirate, only this time her story is more, um, connecting. And last but not least, this one turns into a combination of Asajj Ventress from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Grand Admiral Thrawn from Star Wars Rebels. Although she's mostly Ventress. And she's more evil. And the reason why the first two turn into pirates in the first place. And just for a side note here, Mr. Waifu Stealer over here is going to team up with the new Pirates of the Caribbean 5 villain, Captain Salazar, and there might be an epic sword duel ensuing. So yeah, get ready for that. And another side note before we head into number one, it also makes up for the fact that they look like this instead of this. Makes sense, right guys? And the number one fix that the PvP have done to the MLPs is... Fluttershy Skywalker. Now, this might need some explanation a bit. You might think that she's sweet and innocent at first, but just you reconsider that she's related to not one, but two of the most powerful Jedi killers of all time. So yeah, you might want to reconsider that before confronting her. So yeah, that wraps up my list of top five things that the PBB have fixed using the power of recanonization. If you would want to know more about the PBB, but prevent being scarred for life and grabbing a torch to chase me down and kill me, then leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!